Hey everybody, welcome to a brand new video. Today we're gonna be uh, reacting to some Squidward Suicide. I think that's what that's called actually. It's a creepy pasta, and if you don't know what creepy pastas are, they're they are very scary, creepy stories online that people have just made up. At least to my knowledge. For those of you who do not know, I'm a huge SpongeBob fan, and when I read this, uh, I forget how many years ago. I know it was a long time ago, but it really scarred me from SpongeBob. But then I got over it, and it's all good now. I still like SpongeBob. So we're gonna be uh, looking and reading and watching the video too the Squidward's suicide, okay? So if you don't like really creepy stories and really grossed out stories, do not watch this. But do leave a like though, please. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so we are on Creepypasta. This is Creepypasta dog. Wikia.com or whatever the hell you pr pr pronounce it. Okay, so this is Squidward Suicide. I'm just gonna read it to you guys um, Just because like it's gonna be really really creepy and uh, my stuttering ass should be able to handle it Hopefully <laughs> anyway, I guess I'll just have the cam this big or something um, I just want to start off by saying if you want an answer at the end prepare for to be disappointed there just isn't one. I was an intern at Nickelodeon Studios for a year in 2005 for my degree in animation. It wasn't paid, of course. Most internships aren't, but it did have some perks beyond education. To adults, it might not seem like a big one, but most kids at the time would go crazy over it. Now, since I worked directly with the editors and animators, I got to view the newest episodes days before they aired. I'll get right to it without giving too many unnecessary details. They had very recently made the Spongebob movie and the entire staff was somewhat sapped of creativity so it took them longer to start up the season. But the delay lasted longer for more upsetting reasons. There was a problem with the series 4 premiere that set everyone and everything back for several months. Me and two other interns were in the editing room along with the lead animators and sound editors for the final cut. We received the copy that was supposed to be Fear of a Krabby Patty, gathered around the screen to watch. Now given that it isn't final yet, animators often put a mock title card. Sort of an inside joke for us, with phony, often lewd titles, such as How, S How Sex Doesn't Work, instead of rock a -bi -bi valve I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> when Spongebob and Patrick adopt a sea scallop, nothing particularly funny, but works related chuckles. So when we saw the title card Squidward Suicide, we didn't think it more than a morbid joke. One of the interns did a small throat laugh of it. The happy-go-lucky music plays as normal. The story began with Squidward practicing his clarinet, hitting a few sour notes like normal. Uh, we hear SpongeBob laughing outside and Squidward stops, yelling at him to keep it down as he has a concert that night and needs a practice. SpongeBob says okay and goes to see Sandy with Patrick. The bubble splash screen comes up and we see the ending of Squidward's concert. This is when things began to seem off. While playing, a few frames repeat themselves, but the sound doesn't at this point sound as synced with animation, so yes, that's not common. But when he stops playing, the sound finishes if the skip never happened. There is slight murmuring in the crowd before they began to boo him. Not normal cartoon booing that is common in the show, but you could very clearly hear malice in it. I said that word right. Squidward's in full frame and looks visibly afraid. The shot goes to the crowd with Spongebob in center frame and he too is booing. Very much unlike him. That isn't the oddest thing. What is odd is everyone had hyper realistic eyes. Very detailed. Clearly not shots of real people's eyes but something a bit more real than CGI. The pupils were red. Some of us looked at each other obviously confused but since we weren't the writers we didn't question its appeal to children yet. The shot goes to Squidward sitting on the edge of his bed looking very forlorn. Still don't know what that word means. <laughs> View of his porthole window is of a night sky, so it isn't very long after the concert. The unsettling part is at this point there is no sound. Literally no sound. Not even the feedback from the speakers in the room. It's as if the speakers were turned off, though their status showed them working perfectly. He just sat there blinking in his silence for about 30 seconds, then he started to sob softly. He put his hands tentacles, over his eyes and cried quietly for a full minute more. All the while a sound in the background very slowly growing from nothing to barely audible. It sounded like a slight breeze through a forest. The screen slowly begins to zoom in on his face. By slow I mean it's 
noticeably if you look at t shots 10 seconds apart side by side. His sobbing gets louder, more full of hurt and anger. The screen then twitches a bit, as if it twists in on itself for a split second, then back to normal. The wind through the trees sound gets slowly louder and more severe, as if the storm is brewing somewhere. The eerie part is this sound and Squidward's sobbing sound real, as if the sound wasn't coming from the speakers, but as if the speakers were holes the sound was coming through from the other side. As good as sound as the studio likes to have, they don't purchase the equipment to be that good to produce sound of that quality. Below that sound of the wind and sobbing very faint, something sounded like laughing. It came at odd intervals and never lasted more than a second so you, can, so you had a hard time pinning it. We watched this show twice so pardon me if things sound too specific but I've had time to think about it. After 30 seconds of this, the screen blurred and twitched violently and something flashed over the, the screen as if a single frame was replaced. Lead animation editor paused and rewound frame by frame. What we saw was horrible. It was a still photo of a dead child. He couldn't have been more than six. The face was mangled and bloodied. One eye dangling over his upturned face popped. He was naked down to his underwear, his stomach crudely cut open, and his entrails laying beside him. He was laying on some pavement that was probably a road. The most upsetting part was that there was a shadow of the photographer. There was no crime tape, no evidence tags or markers, and the angle was completely off for a shot designed to be evidence. It would seem the photographer was the person responsible for the child's death. We were of course mortified, but pressed on, hoping that it was just a sick joke. The screen flipped back to Squidward still sobbing louder than before, and half body in frame. There was now that what appeared to be blood running down his face from his eyes. The blood was also done in a hyper-realistic style, looking as if you touched it, you'd get blood on your fingers. The wind sounded now as if it were that of a gale blowing through the forest. There were even snapping sounds of branches, the laughing, a deep baritone lasting at, at longer intervals and coming more frequently. After about 20 seconds, the screen again twisted and showed a single frame photo. The editor was reluctant to go back, we all were, but he knew he had to. This time, the photo was that of what appeared to be a little girl, no older than the first child. She was laying on her stomach, her barrets in a pool of blood next to her. Her left eye was too popped out and popped, naked except for her underpants. Her entrails were piled on top of her above another crude cut along her back. Again, the body was on the street and the photographer's shadow was visible, very similar in size and shape to the first. I had to choke back vomit and one intern, the only female in the room, ran out. The show resumed. About five seconds after the second photo played, Squidward went silent as did all sound, like it was when his scene started. He put his tentacles down and his eyes were now done in hyper-realism like the others were in the beginning of this episode. This is getting really, really, like I haven't read this in a long time and it's now coming back to me and I hate it. They were bleeding, bloodshot, and pulsating. He just stared at the screen as if watching the viewer. After about 10 seconds, he started sobbing, this time not covering his eyes. The sound was piercing and loud, and most fear-inducing of all of his sobbing was mixed with screams. Tears and blood were dripping down his face at a heavy rate. The wind sound came back, and so did the deep voice laughing and this time still photo lasted for a good five frames. The animator was able to stop it in the fourth and backed up. This time the photo was a was a, of a boy about the same age but this time the scene was different. The entrails were just being pulled out from a stomach wound by a large hand. The right eye popped and dangling, blood trickling down it. The animator proceeded. It was hard to believe, but the next one was different, but we couldn't tell what. He went back to the first and played them quicker, and I lost it. I vomited on the floor, the animating and sound editors gasping at the screen. The five frames were not as if they were five different photos. They were played out as if they were fra uh, frames from a video. He saw the hand slowly lift out the guts. He saw the kid's eyes focus on it. We even saw two frames of the ki 
kid be getting the boink. Oh my god, dude. Shit, I forgot about this. Lead sound editor told us to stop. He had to call in the creator to see this. Mr. H Hillenberg arrived within about 15 minutes. He was confused as to why he was being called down there. So the editor just continued the episode. Once the few frames were shown, all screaming, all sound again stopped. Squidward was just staring at the viewer, full frame of the face, for about three seconds. The shot quickly panned out and the deep voice said, do it. And we see Squidward's hands, a shotgun, huh? immediately puts the gun in his mouth and pulls the trigger. Realistic blood and brain matter splatters the wall behind him and his bed and he flies back with the force. The last five seconds of this episode show his body on the bed, on his side, one eye dangling on what's left of his head above the floor, staring blankly at it. Then the episode ends. Mr. Hillenberg is obviously angry at this. He demanded to know what the heck was going on. Most people left the room at this point, so it was just a handful of us to watch it again. Viewing the episode twice only served to imprint the entirety of it in my head and caused me horrible nightmares. I'm sorry I stayed. The only theory we could think of was the file was edited by someone in the chain from the drawing studio to here. CTO was called in to analyze when it happened. The an analyst of the file did show it was edited over by new material. However, the timestamp of it was a mere 24 seconds before we began viewing it. All equipment involved was examined for foreign software and hardware as well as glitches, as if the timestamp may have glitched and showed the wrong time, but everything checked out fine. We don't know what happened and to this day nobody does. There was an investigation due to the nature of the photos, but nothing came of it. No child seen was identified and no clues were gathered from the data involved nor physical clues in the photos. I never believed in unexplainable phenomena before. Now that I have something happen and can't prove anything about it beyond, those are big words, uh, evidence I think twice about things. So we are going to watch the video because I know it's pretty bad. So from here, do not watch it. If you are a younger person, do not watch this, please. And thank you. I beg of you. Um, I'm going to put in the title, not suitable for children. And, um, this might get a little freaky. Let's do it. I kind of don't remember this. Does it just continue this whole thing? Okay, so that's all it was. Let's see some of the comments, I guess. Uh, strong writing obviously shows potential, but the overall premise and tiring cliches bring the story down. This definitely ruined my childhood. I, yeah, definitely. Pretty entertaining story, I would say. Love the story. It's really creepy, and it actually scared me for a change. I mean, the gore and suicide stuff is cliche, but done rather well. Yeah, that is the Squidward Suicide. I hope you guys did enjoy it. I know for you guys that are younger and are still watching this, I don't know how, um, it is very creepy. It is definitely very creepy, and I really don't want to ever read that again, because it like it that definitely brought back memories, for sure. If you guys did like this video, make sure you uh, smash the like button, make sure you share, turn on notifications, and subscribe. If you guys do want this type of video again, make sure you tell me in the comments down below, or suggest other things so guys um don't forget i am getting back to live streaming youtube has officially given me my live streaming rights back which i love it thank you and uh, i'll see you guys tomorrow Deuces.